Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to my home studio. Welcome to Shred 2. This is, this is a guitar build. Uh, this instrument started out as an uncut kit. It was a rectangle. The neck was uncarved. The body was rectangular. I've already said that. What an intro. It's going to look so amazing. You having fun? I'm having fun. So much fun. Burn it. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay! It is a coming together of many years of playing around with guitars and I am very happy with it. Now I am still in the process of applying finish. This is three coats in after uh, the last little bit of uh, ink and penmanship etc and I've got one more coat which will then be left to cure for about five to seven days before I start rubbing down and then buffing and that is not what we're doing today. Today? Well, this is a multi-scale instrument. I need a multi-scale bridge and I fancy making it from scratch without milling machines or lathes or CNC's or 3D printers or any of that jazz. I want to, as much as possible, use hand saws and a hand drill and a hammer or two. Maybe a tap wrench and some files. I think I've probably covered all of it. Onwards. Pew! So since this guitar is covered in copper leaf and stuff, I felt that maybe I should use copper to make the bridge. Why not? Uh... Oh, well, there's not that much in there. Those could do. That could be useful. And then a rivet. All right. I think I could make a bridge or two out of that. Maybe a base plate of some sort as well. Let's see. Quarter of an inch. I can, well, this is the material I have. That means my saddle is going to be a quarter of an inch high. It's fine by me. All right, so these... Uh, I can't remember exactly what this was left from, maybe a custom scratch plate, but uh, we, we forced a patterna, and this is the effect that the forced patterna has on the back of it when, uh, when you have cling film. And the, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Anyhow, that's thin enough to have a base plate, so we'll have something like that. We'll have the, the bridge piece sitting on top of it, you know, moving forward. And I have a bit of cutting to do. Like, more than a bit. With any other guitar, I would take great pains and I would sand and clean and polish the sides and make sure that this material was uh, absolutely perfect before I started. But looking at Shred, I don't need to worry about that at all. In fact, I might even uh, force a patterner on the bridge before we put it together anyway. That could be quite cool. Oh wow, I think we're going to have to do that, aren't we? Uh, maybe, let's see how it works out. So I'm not gonna clean this up. I am, however, going to start by adding some engineer's blue on it. If you don't have real engineer's blue, uh, just some Sharpie would do absolutely fine. And I'm going to scribe the cuts that I need to make and essentially start using the hacksaw. Uh, hacksaw, jeweler's saw, uh, anything that will get it cut accurately. And, and that's essentially where we're at. We're cutting, we're filing, uh, we're drilling. I'm going to be peening in some of this round stock to hold the back end of each saddle together. It's gonna be fun. Uh, now, just before we get to that, here is a quick, super quick recap 
of the design process from uh, a couple of weeks ago. My whole thought was, how do we make something that somebody could build in their shed just using standard bar stock? The idea is to start with a piece of material, say three millimeters, three millimeters wide by the right height on both sides, a little square of the same material in the middle. And what we've got is now a, a gap where we can have our socket headed screw free floating. We've now got our up and down mo motion. Okay, so we've got our height adjustment, we've got our locking down mechanism. How, how is the string gonna be held down, Benjamin? I hear you ask me. The ball end sits in between two grub screws going from the side and locks in place. The string then goes up and away. And as long as you've got a big enough, strong enough system holding your saddle down, probably to a base plate, you'll be all right. The eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that uh, the engineer's blue that I applied has now all come off. Essentially, I'm, I've got a, an engineer's marking paste by Stewart's that uh, you're supposed to be able to mix with methylated spirits to come up with the marking blue that works. This by way of saying that it didn't. It's all come off, it's all over me and... Uh, oh well. Anyhow. Uh, I've also picked up a bigger hacksaw and uh, I'm going to cut some pieces out now, so goodbye. <laughs>
Actually, that's that's closer than I thought it would be. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that is unexpected. That is 10.1 millimeters. So what I need to do is actually cut more of this material. Instead of using the square like that and just chopping them off at Fair enough. Let the fun times roll. We have got this clamped together and I now need to uh, I now need to drill a couple of holes and peen a, uh, a rod across that will hold it together. I'm not going to be brazing it. I actually don't know how to braze things. It's, it's not a skill I've ever uh, invested time in learning, although I feel like I should. Uh, I am going to be using a small four millimeter brass rod. If I used copper, it would be hidden absolutely, and uh, I would use copper if I had a piece of copper the right size. I don't, so brass it is. Anyhow, onto the drilling. Automatic center punch. It doesn't automatically find the center, it automatically punches. That's something that confused me for the longest, longest time, embarrassingly so. Where are we? So that's where I'm gonna drill there. And then this one. Bang in the center. Now, I could put this in the pillar drill, and I probably should, but I'm only drilling through 10 millimeters of material, and I am confident that I can do it square. I'm starting with a two mil uh, cutter, and or drill bit, and then I'll go up to the four that I require. If you have a drill press, and advice and all that jazz, probably do that. It's all right, it's all right. It's a draw. That's not supported. We're almost through. There we go. I need to put this more central so that top section and the bottom section are supported more. Worked out okay there. Okay, so the next stage is to find what I'm working on. <laughs> uh, put a countersink in the drill and we're just, just very lightly countersinking around the outside of each of these holes. That's to give the brass rod somewhere to bite into as we pin it over. So essentially, it's going to have a, a double-sided countersunk shape. We're riveting this together, people. You know what I'm talking about. That's a damn fine countersink. Hall, apparently. Really nice. I'm hoping, and this is the first one of these I've done, I'm hoping that just a single really beefy piece in there. It's going to hold everything in place and it will be fine. If not, we're going to have to go with much uh, with two much smaller pieces of steel or something uh, 
in order to stop these bits from wiggling. We will see. You're on a journey. <laughs> We're on a journey. Okay, I'm going to chop a piece of brass rod, uh, say three or four millimeters bigger than I need it to be. I should probably learn to catch those first, shouldn't I? And before I cut my piece off, I want to peen one side over so it's already roughly in place. And uh, you do that before you cut it so that uh, the other side that you're hitting against is also being peened and vice versa. Again, you know what I'm talking about. Fine, 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 fine. Don't judge me. I get so excited, you see, and I forget. I've made that too long. I need to cut off some excess, to be honest. Same thing for that side. We're getting that. You only really want a millimeter, looks like. And this is the thing. So if this goes well, that won't be moving anymore. Do this this way, which is smarter than what I did last time. Mm. Mm, that's not really good enough. You can also start with a, uh, a center punch, for example, or even a bigger one. Like so. and that pushes the material out. That's nice and solid, actually. To the edge, maybe. Alright, I know you want to see the saddle, but but I just spotted this. What are you guys doing? That's supposed to be a garden. They found a new spot. Hmm. Incorrigible. She's remaining impressively white though. Ish. <laughs> All right, enough of that. So I do need to just uh, sand down the, bo the bottom, of course. There's the top. I'm planning on rounding the back end over. There you go. And now that's the front. Okay, so uh, just a, a plain rectangle is boring, isn't it? So we want things to be just a little bit more attractive than that. And uh, it would be nice hmm. There's so many options. Before I go too far, I, I am actually going to call it a day here. This is this is solid and chunky and uh, looking 
like it's going to work. Nibbling beam, tidy up the base, of course. But uh, what I'm going to do is fail with the leveling beam now, because I'm trying to talk to you as well. I will be back tomorrow. We will install the height adjusting grub screw, which is uh, another test, and that's going to have to go through the, probably through the center. Oh. It's actually quite dangerous to have that going through the center of the, uh, the pinned bit. I should have given myself a bit more room. I really should have. Anyway, successful so far. I have, I have a problem and I know it's a problem and you know it's a problem or we know it's a problem. It is that I tend to make my life more difficult for myself for no real reason. And it occurred to me that what I've been making up to this point bridge wise, saddle wise at least, is so ubiquitous in the end that I might as well just buy one. I mean, why am I going to the trouble of doing something like that that is just the way it's done, basically? It's not the way it's made, but it's the way it's done. Uh, I can hear chickens and dogs and things in the background, just, just, just checking. So anyhow, let's, let's have a quick look. I was disheartened and uh, turned the cameras off. And that was the system to hold the string in. It would swing underneath and go through and lock in. That's something relatively new. And uh, I actually went and did another test. That is three pieces of, of copper stuck together. Well, you can see where I slipped with the drill there. Uh, but from this side, you can't tell that I've got two of these copper. And that's just copper wire from, you know, a large heavy duty cable. It then occurred to me, okay, fine. Why don't I have the string go through from the back, like so, and another way of holding the saddle down to the guitar. And uh, I removed some material like that. And the thought was I could have a, a bolt going down like there and the saddle on the other side would have the same hole and you could move them backwards and forwards and that then, when it's bolted down, would lock your saddle in place. It's just boring. It is doing something the hard way for the sake of doing something the hard way. They should put that on my grave. They really should. So, I went back to the drawing board. What I've come up with is something akin to this. Basically, here is a piece that will be bolted into the guitar body. You've got your forward and backwards momentum. You've got a pivoting hinge through the saddle there. I'm trying to avoid through body stringing. So your string goes into the saddle and gets locked in from there with a grub screw. You've got standard height adjustment if it's made rectangular like this, uh, which goes up and down and then that whole thing moves. I then went and had a play with some copper. And shred is copper-tastic, really. But actually making the bridge out of solid copper is not gonna work because it's just too damn soft. I've managed to take a, 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 a tap it, so it's got a thread and it's okay. Uh, you can see here how the screw is moving up and down. And that, that works absolutely fine. Uh, this grub screw here is locking my, my string in, which is going there. I need to make an adjustment so that we've got a, a higher saddle at that point. And then my height adjustment in this one is just a single six millimeter grub screw going through the bottom. And uh, that will push through the string, it'll be you will have to move the string out the way when you want to adjust the height. But you know, that's not too difficult, is it? I don't want to make it out of circular stock round bar. I want to make it out of brass hex bar. 
and I don't have the right size, and that is a problem. I was hoping to do this at least find you know give a finished example of all six uh, by the end of this episode, but it's not going to happen. I have to order some material. So what I'm going to do now is leave that thought with you. We've got an interesting looking bridge system. It does everything we want, up, down, forward, back, and uh, will be individually situated so we could make six if we need, 10 if we need, uh, makes no difference. It could be smaller, we could have, you know, this would work on anything. I am going to make it out of brass stock and contemplate, well, ways to make it look copper colored. That could be fun. Still, I'm gonna move on to the guitar itself now. The, the finish has been curing. I've put five coats, maybe six coats on since we last spoke about finish, and it now needs to be rubbed down and maybe even buffed. I'm not sure how shiny I'm gonna leave the back. Uh, I was, the, the original thought was that it was gonna be a matte finish, and I might rub it down and then uh, dab on another layer of the finish to get a sort of textured feel. I'm not convinced on that. But as it currently stands, I'm going to uh, spend rather a lot of time rubbing this baby down. Uh, I'm gonna start with 1200 or maybe even 1500 grit. It's gonna take longer, but I'm gonna have fewer deep scratches to get rid of uh, because I do want I do want a nice finish on this. All right, this is gonna take a long time, but it's gonna be gorgeous. Uh, oh, come on, have a look, have a look. So because of the, the brush strokes, there's just a lot more work to do. I am using 1500 grit on the top and I'm gonna actually start at 1200 grit for the back moving around, not to make you ill, but to show you the remainder of what we've got going on. It's gonna take a bit of work, that is for sure. But, you know, definitely worth it. Thank you very, very much for watching. There is gonna be another episode on Saturday. Uh, this guitar is going to be the only guitar you see until it is finished, and then I'm starting the great guitar build off. Nebula is under finish at Crimson, and it needs to be a perfect finish. It is a custom order for a client, and uh, we're not going to be rushing that phase of the build, not at all. So, uh, yeah, you're going to have to hold your horses for Nebula, but Shred will be done, and will be done soon. Click like, subscribe, check out the live streams, consider supporting our Patreon, and most importantly, go make some dust. Have fun. See you soon. Goodbye.